We are experiencing a revolution in publishing. Environments such as the World Wide Web enable us to effortlessly access a seemingly infinite network of documents that holds the promise of containing somewhere any piece of information we might need to know. Yet, if you don't know where to look, it's actually quite hard to find things. The current solution to this dilemma is to access a service that enables content-based search over some collection of pre-indexed World Wide Web pages. Here, the user is asking for information on the topic of commercial applications of AI machine learning programs. The system responds by returning document titles. Many of these seem related to the topic of interest, yet it is not immediately clear which document would be best to access first, or in general, how these documents are related to each other or to the query. Search interfaces typically do not go beyond providing the user with a set of documents that match the query. As environments scale up, we can expect searches to return hundreds, perhaps thousands of documents that are legitimately relevant. Can systems provide tools that help the user make sense of this wealth of information? This videotape will demonstrate one information access interface called Tilebars that investigates this issue. Tilebars is a method for displaying and exploiting query term distribution information in long documents. A typical similarity search retrieves a list of ranked documents. In this case, the user is interested in commercial uses of machine learning programs and has entered the search terms AI, learning, product, marketing, and commercial. The roles played by the search terms are unclear. For example, the top ranked documents are not clearly related to machine learning. The tilebar interface provides a way for users to understand the results of their searches on long documents. In this illustration, the retrieved document is represented by the rectangle. Each square within the rectangle represents a coherent text segment or subtopic within the document. In this example, the document is made up of 12 subtopical segments. Say the user is interested in documents on commercial uses of machine learning techniques. The top row of squares corresponds to the number of times the term learning occurs in the document. The bottom row corresponds to the number of times the term product occurs in the document. The darker the square, the more frequent the term. This tile bar suggests that the retrieved document has well-distributed discussions of both learning and products, perhaps strong enough to indicate that both are main topics of this document. The next tile bar suggests that while learning is a main topic of the document, product gets only a subtopic discussion. The next tile bar suggests that a subtopic discussion of learning takes place in another context, such as evaluation. The last example shows passing references to each term. Most likely, this document is not of interest. Most retrieval systems do not provide a clear way for users to distinguish among these cases. Suppose the user is interested in articles that discuss the relative merits of the Prolog and Lisp programming languages. As is clear from the interface, the first two documents discuss both languages in great detail. Document 6, however, talks predominantly about Lisp, with brief mentions of Prolog at the beginning and the end. As we scroll down the results set, we see that there are a great many documents that have an abbreviated discussion of both terms. Interestingly, the two terms seem to occur in the same segment and in only one segment in a large number of documents. Continuing further down the result set, we see documents in which each term occurs but without significant overlap. Most likely, these documents are not as interesting as ones with some overlap. The result set is ordered according to overall term frequency, number of segments with overlap, and the distribution of the term hits across the segments. Now we illustrate the example of looking for documents on commercial applications of machine learning. In this case, the user breaks up the query into three conceptual parts, AI, learning, and the business terms of product, marketing, and commercial. A constraint has been set up so that all of the terms must occur with some overlap in at least one part of each retrieved document. Additionally, the user indicates that terms having to do with learning must occur frequently throughout the document. The graphical representation allows us to see what role learning is playing in each displayed document. For example, the document labeled number zero does have a large discussion of learning, even though its title might not imply this. Document number one also has an intense discussion of learning, but document two looks less interesting from this perspective. Documents three, five, and six discuss neural networks and artificial life, both kinds of machine learning. Document four appears to use a different sense of learning. From the representation, we can see that most of these documents are not primarily focused on the business aspects of the query. To remedy this, we can loosen the constraint on the occurrences of learning and insist on the more frequent discussions of the business terms instead.
This leads us quickly to a document titled High-End AI on the Mac, which seems relevant. This videotape has demonstrated a new graphical interface that visualizes term distribution information in a full-text information access system. The representation simultaneously and compactly indicates relative document length, query term frequency, and query term distribution. This technique goes beyond search to assist the user in making sense of retrieval results.